Now, if you're into astrophotography or ever even thought about it, you probably have heard of the program Stellarium. Stellarium is an awesome planetarium. It's open source. It's beautiful. It's got everything that you need to control your telescope. It's just great. But I want to show you one thing, which is the best setting I've ever seen in Stellarium. And this is the setting right here to make everything pop and come alive in Stellarium. And I am going to talk to you about this setting here in this video. My name is Chad. This is the Easy Astro Images channel, and we are going to play with some photons tonight. What is going on, everybody? Huge shout out to Steve Miller entering into Space Channel, his podcast that he had on the other day with uh, Glenn, Astro Bloke. He talked about this, and I know a lot of people don't like to listen to like long podcasts, so I wanted to make this quick video about what I'm doing here in Stellarium. So we all know that, like, well, most of us know that down here, there's these two little buttons here where you have your deep space imaging or you have another kind of survey applied to your image. If you don't have that stuff turned on in Stellarium, you know, you can kind of scroll through Stellarium. And if you start zooming in on things, you can see cute little pictures of, ga of galaxies and all that kind of stuff. If you click the DSS button after you go in and set this up, you can actually make even more objects pass, uh, pass through and be able to see those. Now, granted, it's a little bit tougher on your computer and your video card. So if you're importing stuff from a Nook, you probably don't want to do this. But what Steve recommended to do was to turn on a red DSS channel, which I will show you where that is. And when we turn this on, this basically just blows up everything in the world that is ever able to be seen out here in the galaxies, the universes, whatever. So if you just take a look at all of, we're seeing that pretty much the H alpha signals from this survey. And, you know, you can just zoom in and see little pieces of, of uh, H alpha that you might want to just point your camera at. And of course, the more you zoom in, um, the more uh, detail and stuff the objects will pick up. And you can just find all kinds of little places to shoot your cameras anything that you want to look at. And then you can also turn on different labels. A lot of these are dark nebulas um, are inside of them or they're sharpless images. And it's real easy to turn all this stuff on. Uh, what you would just want to do is go over here first to the configuration menu. And we want to make sure that you have these buttons down here. So if you go and click on show additional buttons. You wanna make sure that you have DSS survey or the HIP surveys turned on. And then when you're done with that, you're going to want to save the settings and save the view. Now, what you're done with that, you can go over to DSO. And this is where it's actually gonna be able to tell you what stuff you want to see. Like I want to see the dark nebula. I want to see Caldwell. I want to see the Sharpless stuff. And then you can also turn up and down your labels, like how many of those things you can actually see. Once you select all this, you're going to want to go over to surveys and you're going to have two different kinds, deep sky or solar system. And you can go through here and play with any ones that you want. Um, what we're interested in looking at is the ones down here that are called DSS and they've got all, they've got a colored, a blue, a near infrared and the red and the red just seems to work the best. You can see, I have it selected. You could also select uh, the DSS colored if you wanted to. And then I believe you can actually, uh, tab through these if I'm not mistaken. So if I click off that and click on DSS colored, I think that's going to bring up the, the same one that we were looking at before. Not really sure about the difference between DSS and the actual hip survey. It's a little bit confusing. They should be separated out a little bit different, but that is all good. So when you're happy, 
said four, go through and save everything. And now every time you boot up Stellarium, that is what you are going to see. And then when you click out of here, it's going to be there. And now we can see that if we zoom in on what we were just looking at, this is Lowers Nebula, which I believe is an item that Joe shot himself a while back, maybe a year ago. And you can just pretty much see that there is literally just H alpha everywhere. And it's super awesome. You can see that like, even if you shoot these different star clusters and stuff, you can pick up, you know, the, the flux nebula and all that kind of stuff. That's just out there, all that just galactic stuff everywhere. Um, I've been really focusing this year a lot on the M 81 M 82 area. And this stuff is just coming up in some of my images as well right now. So just absolutely loving it. Big, huge shout out to Steve to bringing new light into Stellarium. Oh, by the way, the button right here to exit full screen is right there. So you just click that and now you can get and have access to all of the rest of your stuff within Stellarium. And then once you make all those settings, of course, go back in here and save your view and save your settings again. So that way, when you restart Stellarium, it will pop up just like that. So big shout out to Steve again. Hope this helps you guys out. Thanks for everything again and peace.